Welcome to Trade the Trend, a weekly video about where the stock market is going. This video is going to focus on the S&P 500. I'm going to cover the ASX 200 as well as copper, gold, oil and uranium in a separate video. I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. I'm also going to tell you about some important developments in the bond market, so make sure you stick around for that. As always, this is general commentary. It doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all that said, let's get into our first chart. So I've got the, uh, the S&P 500 up on the, um, up on the screen and more positive price action through the week. S&P 500 got within a percentage point of its, um, of its all-time high back in um, January 2022. Did that on Wednesday and at Thursday's close, Thursday's close was only around 1.5% below that mark. So I think given the, the close proximity of such a key market, we may well see the market have another, another attempt at breaking to a new all-time high in the next, next few days. That said, though, I don't think the S&P 500 offers an asymmetric entry point at, at current levels. I don't want to chase the market. I don't want to chase the market after such a big, strong run over the last, last few weeks. It's, um, it is very much stretched above these moving averages. So I've got the 50 and the 100-day moving averages on the screen. And as I said, it is getting close to that all-time high, which is somewhat of a, a psychological barrier, which doesn't always, doesn't always fall on the first attempt. And uh, it's interesting also to, to put an RSI on. Have a look at this. Um, have a look at an RSI of the S&P 500. And that is just jammed that one. Let me just let me just refresh that and try that again. And uh, the RSI tells its own interesting story. So I'm just going to call that up again now. Get the uh, S&P 500. Get the RSI. That looks a bit better. So putting the RSI on. And um, look, what we see when you when we look at the RSI is the RSI is already backed off. Um, after getting up to some, some pretty high levels earlier in the week. And we've got a situation so that we've got a situation where if the S&P 500 does kick to a new high over the next, next few days, maybe over the next week, it's probably unlikely that the, um, the RSI from its current levels will be able to rebound and make a new high as well. So then that, of course, sets up a situation where we potentially get some some divergence creeping in, and that's another sign of a market that is getting stretched and is getting ready for some sort of a pause. So I think while that overall trend very much remains up, I don't want to get overexcited at current levels after a big rally has already occurred. I think the um, I think that a period of consolidation is probably getting close and it's also important to remember that consolidations aren't a bad thing. Consolidations are a part of every healthy upward trend. My preference at, at, this, at this stage of the rally is to, to look for stocks that are breaking out of ranges or rallying off their moving averages. I'm happy to maintain an exposure to the S&P 500, like letting profits run is a, is a key part of, of being successful and making money in the market. You've got to let your profits run, so I've got no problem maintaining an exposure um, but at least in the near term, I'm being selective at what, what I buy at um, what seems to be elevated levels um, that is nearing some sort of a pause. Now, let's, um, let's jump over the equal weight, the S&P 500 equal weight ETF, because that's also in, in, um, tells its own important story. Uh, this week, you can see it's already been consolidating over the last few days. Uh, and this is what this does. It gives those moving averages. So again, the 50 and 100 day moving averages gives those moving averages a chance to to catch up. The um, but overall, overall, I think this is a, this is all positive price action. Equal weight index hit a, a 20 month high last week, and that's the highest level since over here in April 2022. Um, I think that's an sign of the improving participation. Uh, within the within the market, it's not just a, a rally driven by seven stocks. It's a more broader based participation that we're now now seeing. And I think this is just another reason why um, this is a market which I think we should be approaching from the long side. 
Now, if you're getting some value, please hit that like button. Please leave a short comment. It just tells YouTube you're watching and you're engaging and YouTube does its thing and shows other people. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Now, let's go across and have a look at the, the Russell 2000, the, uh, the, the small cap index. Um, really significant stuff here going on. I think this is a, this is a, a big positive that we've seen such a rapid improvement in the, um, the, the small to mid caps. Uh, the Russell's gone. It's actually really interesting. The Russell's gone from a 52-week low to a 52-week high in only, I think it's only 48 days, which is quite extraordinary. The previous fastest, uh, the previous fastest turnaround, as I understand it in the, the Russell 2000, was got to go all the way back to 1982. And it experienced its, um, uh, that was a 60 day, a 60 day turnaround from a 52 week high, 52 week low to a 52 week high. So it's, um, yeah, quite, a, it's, well, it is historic what we've just seen in the, uh, in the Russell. Um, that last time the market had such a swift turnaround in 1982, it went on to gain another 54% in the next year. So that's not to suggest the same outcome is going to happen this time. Who knows what's going to happen this time? None of us know. But nonetheless, it's an historic reversal and it shouldn't be ignored. Uh, just looking at the chart at the moment, though, just like that S&P 500, it looks like some consolidation is probably becoming due. Uh, prices are... are Prices are really stretched above these moving averages. So the 50 and the 100 day moving averages, they're crossing, they're turning upwards. That's all positive. Prices above the averages, that's positive. But it's just a long way above the moving averages. And when that happens, we often get a situation where the price does start to pull back to those averages or at the very least goes sideways while the averages start to, to catch up. And the other point to note is that the Russell is testing this big overhead resistance area at around around about that 2000 mark. And that's uh, where the previous high points have been over the past 18 months, it marks the top of an 18 month range. So where we currently are would be a natural place for the market to pause and potentially build some energy to, to break to the top side of this range. And should that happen, then we'd really do start to look at the, at, at targets getting back towards these um, these previous highs. That's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We need to get out of this range first and uh, and wouldn't be surprised to see that some consolidation before that happens. Overall though, I think this is a positive price structure and uh, and I think again, another reason to, to stay long stocks. Now, just quickly, just on the, the 10 year bond yield, this is one we've been talking about over the last, last few months. It's, um, I think this is worth keeping an eye on. It's gone from a position of being above the moving averages to now being well below the moving averages. Now these averages are starting to turn, they're rolling over, they're starting to cross. So that's, that, is, um, that suggests like lower yields could well be on the, on the horizon. But given we've gone from above averages to below averages, often what we see at these crossover points is we get some sort of return move, or at least a pause or a partial return back towards the averages while the averages continue to cross and, and turn lower. So they all see, they're also looking a bit stretched at this point below those averages. So just something to keep in mind, it could be, it, this could also coincide with some sort of pause in stocks if and of course it isn't if it's not about trying to pick a low or fight a trend it's just being aware of the possibility that there could be some sort of a near-term rebound high in higher yields in and that could could coincide with some sort of a pause in stock so it's something to something to, to keep in mind should that sort of price action start to materialize during the um maybe during the, the next week so look let's um leave that there for this week Thank you for joining me. Hopefully that's been of value and I look forward to coming back and talking to you next week. Till then, bye for now.